I really like collecting fancy dice trays and gaming accessories, but like you guys, I obviously also really like building things myself. And I know you guys like it when I build things on the cheap. So today I'm gonna show you guys how I've made this fancy, well, quote unquote, fancy, somewhat fancy, it's nice, dice tray for about five bucks. Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. Now, despite having all these really nice dice trays that were made by people far more skilled than me, most of the time I find myself using this one. This is a dice tray that I made, I don't know, about two years ago. It's made from a $3 wood artist canvas from Dollarama. I painted it, put some felt in it, and this is the one I use almost every time I play a game. It's absolutely the one I use every time I DM. It always lives in my DM zone, but I also use it when I'm playing other games. And even when I'm traveling to play as a player in the D&D campaign that I play in, I take this one about half the time. The other half of the time I take a more portable, much nicer one, but for some reason I find myself coming back to this and that's great. I've been wanting to build one of these on the channel for a while, so I finally got around to going to Dollarama, buying another one of these wood canvases, and I built this one so that I could share the process with you guys. All told, I spent about $6 Canadian, so $5 or less USD in materials to buy for this build. I did, of course, use some consumable items like paint and glue that I already had on hand and every crafter should, but in terms of actual items I bought for this, about five bucks. So today, Let's see how I made it. And then you guys can build one for yourself. So the main purchase to make this project happen is a wooden canvas. I buy them for three bucks Canadian at Dollarama. You can buy this sort of thing at craft stores like Michael's sometimes, or even find them on Amazon, but the price is usually going to be way more. So hopefully you can find something similar at your local bargain store. I'm going to be using what's actually the back of this thing as the tray. And since these are cheaply made and you aren't supposed to see the back, there is often some glue spilling out of the corners that needs cleaning up before proceeding. Based on the design I did previously, I wanted to have a continuous border of runes decorating the tray. The last time I just painted these runes on in the final step, but this time I wanted to actually carve them into the tray. I started by marking out some guidelines through the middle third of the border. I didn't measure this, I just eyeballed it, and I didn't use a straight edge, I just finger gauged the lines. I've said this before, and I'm gonna say it again here. Finger gauging a straight line is a skill that is worth your time to practice and learn. Then I gouged these border lines before doing the runes. I wanted these to be carved in place first. This was a bit tricky. I used a sculpting tool that had a sharp point and used a straight edge to get the indent started. This helped me not kind of slip out of place when making the first dent. After that, I could deepen the line freehand. The trick here was to not overlap and make good true square corners. For the runes, I just looked up a dwarven alphabet on my phone. These type of runes work really well in a bordering line and are on the easier side to carve because they're pretty simple geometric shapes with a lot of straight lines. While writing out the text message that I had come up with, I realized that the particular set of runes that I had selected was missing certain letters from the alphabet and I wanted my message to have all the letters that I needed. So I searched out for another Dwarven alphabet and that one had all the letters, so I went with that one. If you're wondering what the message on the dice tray actually says, well, you'll need to have access to the Patreon post where I posted this video. There I'll post the poem I concocted for my patrons as a little bonus. Now the tedious hand cramping and totally regretful part of the project, carving in all those little letters. I found the best way to do this was using a sharp point of a spade shaped sculpting tool. I tried several methods, the nail point tool, carving first with an X-Acto, then deepening the line with a tool, I even tried a rotary Dremel tool. 
None of the other methods worked as well as this one. So despite not being that fast and being really hard on the hands after a while, it still was the best method that I could come up with. And eventually, after about an hour of tedious hand cramping work, I eventually got through it all. After carving, I needed to prime it out in black, and I opted to use spray paint for this to avoid introducing any moisture from something like liquid craft paint into the MDF. I had concerns that if I used a liquid paint, that the MDF would slightly hydrate and swell, ruining all the intricate carving work that I had just done. It might have been fine, but I didn't want to take that risk. Up to this point, I had been planning on having the finished tray be black with gold in the Reese's, just like my one that I had made previously, basically just an upgraded version of that one. But for whatever reason, at this point, I decided to switch gears and make the whole thing metallic. Had I known this from the start, I probably would have primed it in brown instead. I painted out the whole thing using a metallic bronze craft paint. This covered really well on the top surface, but the smoother sides took several frustrating coats. Metallics are really bad at covering large flat areas. It would have been easier if I had primed it with a similar color or even done a base coat in a non-metallic craft paint of a similar color. At this point, I moved on to weathering the piece using a combination of washes. First, I hit everything with my homemade black wash. Then I used my vertigris or vertigras wash to try and age and tarnish the bronze. I made this batch in a previous episode where I turned some random minis into statues. And I gotta say, the effect works much better on minis that have a lot of variety to their shape and a lot of texture. It really didn't work that well here. I'm not sure if it even improved the look in any way and arguably it may have made it worse. I messed around with the washes for a long time trying to get them to look right and eventually just gave up and called it good. The final look was okay, but not great. If I were to do this again, I would have opted for a simple red or brown wash in the carved areas and called it a day. The weathering here made it look more dirty than aged, and I decided to finish the paint with a dry brushing of gold to try and clean it up a bit. I sealed the whole thing using gloss Mod Podge. A spray varnish would absolutely be a better choice for this, but I was trying to keep this whole project budget conscious. And the Mod Podge was sitting right in front of me. I chose gloss because I wanted to bring back some more of the shine to the metallic paint. It's funny, I use Mod Podge on almost everything I build, but this is one of the rare times where I actually used it as a final varnish coating like it's intended for. Now, what makes a budget dice tray like this actually look nice and seem more fancy than it really is, is by lining the bottom with something nice. If you go to a place like Michael's, they have all sorts of fancy papers that work great for this. I like using this paper velvet. It's a bit more expensive, but it still feels really, really nice and is pretty darn affordable. Gluing this paper in can be a tricky ordeal, by far the hardest part of the whole project. You don't want to use a really liquid glue and you want thin, full coverage. You don't want any bubbles in your material here. Spray adhesives like Super 77 are ideal, but it gives no wiggle room for you to adjust the positioning. You get one try and then it's stuck. What I like to do first is cut a paper template to test fit it out of construction paper. This way you can play around with getting it just right. There's always a lot of adjustment needed because these frames are not perfect. Don't assume they are actually square. Once I had my test piece fitting nicely, I could use it as a guide to cut out the actual velvet paper and then test that before actually spraying it with the glue. I sprayed the back of the paper with the adhesive. You could instead spray the tray itself and that might make placing the paper a little bit easier, but then you have to mask off all the painted areas. 
I wanted to upgrade this tray a little more from my previous one. And one thing about the first version I made that I didn't like is that it was kind of loud and had kind of an unappealing sound when rolling dice. So I decided to put a felt bottom on this one to give the dice rolls a more pleasing muted sound. Again, Michael sells small pieces of felt for really cheap if you don't wanna buy a big piece. You can even buy some that already have the adhesive on them, but they will cost you about three or four times more per piece. And since I knew I was already gonna be using spray adhesive on this build, I just bought the cheaper plain felt version. To attach it, I opted to spray the back of the tray, being careful not to overspray the sides, and I did this outside. Then I could just drop the tray onto the felt and cut away the excess. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with the outcome here. This type of project is a fun change of pace from making terrain or painting minis, and something like this can make for a great gift for your players or your DM. To make this happen, I purchased the wood canvas, velvet paper, and felt, and in total, this cost me just over $5 Canadian, close to six, so that equals just under $5 USD. I didn't include the cost of bits of consumables I used like glue and paint as it's assumed most crafters have those on hand. And even if you did price out the small percentage used, it would just be pennies. If you wanna pick up any tools or supplies for your own projects, head over to blackmagiccraft.ca and use my essential equipment page to see all the stuff that I use and recommend. I have affiliate links to Amazon there and using them means that you get the right stuff and in the process of sh doing your regular shopping, you support this channel and the production of videos like this one. Another great way to help out the channel is by joining the Black Magic Craft Fellowship on Patreon. If you get a lot of value out of my work, joining there helps ensure that I can keep doing it and continue to try and do it better. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful and inspiring. Hit the like button if you did, let me know in the comment section. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and check out my back catalog of other videos. Thanks for watching guys. Have a great weekend. I will see you again next week. Cheers.